coffee. Oh, you need the coffee on Monday morning. That sweet, sweet caffeine helps you kind of feel like the weekend didn't happen a little bit, at least enough. In some cases, the effect is beneficial, and in others, maybe it's a bit of a crutch. I'm not here to judge, I'm here to talk about how and why. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Waste Time, we ask the question, how does caffeine affect our body? So a lot of people depend on caffeine-filled drinks in order to wake up in the morning. What happens specifically? Well, when you wake up, there's obviously a transition as opposed to a switch. You don't go from asleep to awake. I mean, on a purely descriptive level you do, but that's not exactly how the brain works. When you immediately wake up, you feel groggy. You still feel tired, you don't feel a full range of motion and cognitive ability. If somebody asks you something or gives you a problem to solve, you're not gonna do it well. You're not gonna give them the answer they want if it's more complicated than are you awake right now. Yeah, but come on, like, let me get my coffee. This phenomenon is referred to as sleep inertia. Sleep inertia actually takes about one to two hours to go away entirely. And the way people react to this is different for every single person. Some people get through sleep inertia super Super fast or get through the bulk of it super fast and some people myself included take for friggin ever I am NOT functional until I've had coffee and about two hours to sit around stretch and you know come to the gradual realization that I'm not going to be able to go back to sleep sleep inertia itself doesn't actually have research that tells us why but we do know that the brain falls asleep in stages the cortex for instance is technically awake longer than the thalamus so it's possible that waking up is the same. You could also refer to this as partial power on or partial systems go, depending on how you like to talk, I guess. If you like to refer to us as biological robots, be my guest. We are kind of machines, just biological ones. So while you're awake, your brain accumulates a substance called adenosine. It's a substance that regulates sleep and is needed specifically in order to sleep in a consistent and normal manner. As sleep inertia dissipates, so do the effects of adenosine. Now here's the deal with caffeine. Caffeine is a stimulant, and it's a stimulant that doesn't really discriminate what it stimulates. It stimulates oxygen production, it stimulates the production of urine, and it stimulates water release into the gut, which, as you might have noticed, caffeine causes you to need to poop. That's why. Being adenosine is a regulatory substance that essentially encourages sleep in a regulated manner. Caffeine's stimulation of pretty much everything else acts as a combatant to the effects of adenosine. The adenosine isn't gone by any means, it has to dissipate in its natural way. But because everything is kind of working in overdrive, not necessarily hyper overdrive, but overdrive, you become less sensitive to the effects of the adenosine. Effectively, this could make you more alert and do one of two things. If you haven't slept yet, it could help you not sleep because adenosine is making you feel like you should sleep or making you sleep. Or if you're transitioning out of sleep inertia, could make you feel awake even though your brain isn't necessarily entirely awake, simply by dulling the effects of the adenosine that's still in your system. Now, long-term usage of caffeine might in fact increase the number of adenosine receptors in your brain. This isn't a definite thing, but it can happen. And because of this, you can feel tired more, and it would also require more caffeine to elicit the dulling response. This would obviously result in a higher level of tired. You would be more tired, and it would be harder to transition to being awake. Now, the reason I say that this doesn't definitely happen is because although there have been studies that have certainly shown that it's possible to happen, everybody reacts to things in different ways, and everybody reacts to caffeine in different ways. There are people that consume caffeine and get all of the benefits of it with none of the negative effects, such as dependence. And then there are people who get nothing from the usage of caffeine. Obviously, on a chemical level, something is happening, but they don't feel any of the cognitive effects that are associated with caffeine. Believe it or not, any caffeine ingested takes about an hour to take effect anyhow. So if it takes one or two hours for you to actually wake up, you could maybe shave an hour off of that, which isn't terrible. But the thing to take away from some of what we talked about is that caffeine can create a dependency and it can actually emphasize or exacerbate the effects that made you tired in the first place. Now, keeping in mind that the 
these studies are often done over long periods of time with fairly high dosages of caffeine in order to emphasize what's going on and make it easier to notice. Having a cup of coffee in the morning isn't necessarily the same thing as what causes those adenosine receptors to multiply. And we have to say that kind of stuff because everybody reacts differently to everything. And sleep is something that is also very unique person to person. But as said earlier as well, it's not specifically just sleepiness that is affected, alertness, awakeness. Caffeine is a universal stimulant and it does cause basically everything to up itself. So in small amounts, it's actually not a bad thing at all. And it's the most used psychoactive drug in the entire world. It's also not one that causes a lot of major problems, so it's probably going to continue to be. Do you drink a lot of coffee or consume caffeine in some other way? Leave us a comment telling us what you think and what your experience is. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please click like. And if you're not subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos all the time, and the best way to see them first is a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero, and we'll see you next time right here on Waste Time.